we have the tools today to address climate change and to do so while saving the world money. Twenty-five percent of the climate problem comes from the Earth's land. It comes from deforestation, cutting down and burning forest to create new agricultural land. It comes from agriculture. It comes from using too much fertilizers that release nitrous oxide into the air, which traps a lot of heat and causes additional global warming. It also comes from our use of rice fields and our overwhelming number of cattle in the world, releasing methane into the atmosphere. And so if we look at forestry and land use and agriculture, they're about the same size as all the world's electricity in terms of combating of global warming. So how do we fix our food system and forestry management to solve global warming? One of the things we have to do is first stop tropical deforestation. A lot of forest around the world is still being cleared, mainly for producing more oil palm, soybeans, beef, and timber around the world. In places like Indonesia, Brazil, and other tropical forest. But when those forests are cleared, they're often burned or left to rot, and that takes the wood and the biomass of those forests and it turns it into carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere, adding to our greenhouse gas problem, contributing to global warming. So stopping deforestation, helping to protect those forests, whether it's new laws or new kind of business practices or helping native peoples, indigenous peoples, protect the land that they're already on, those turn out to be really important climate change solutions, but they're also important to protecting local biodiversity and the health of these forests worldwide. So that's a win-win. It turns out using too much fertilizer around the world is another big contributor to climate change. When we use too much synthetic fertilizer especially, it creates a funny little gas called nitrous oxide. I call it a funny little gas, but we also call it laughing gas. It turns out that stuff leaking into the atmosphere from using too much fertilizer actually also contributes to global warming. It traps heat in the atmosphere, just like CO2 does, but even more powerful molecule for molecule. So learning how to use less fertilizer more precisely on the land to get the same amount of food is a really good way that kind of precision agriculture and more high-tech farming approaches could help us reduce global warming. Growing beef is a major contributor to climate change the way we do it now, mainly because cattle and dairy cows release methane. Turns out uh, cows burp more methane than comes out the other end because they don't digest their food very well sometimes. So one idea is to help cattle eat better, maybe grazing on grass instead of on feed, kind of changing the diets of the cattle themselves, but also reducing the total amount of beef we eat in the world. That would also be a big step. So if we can maybe reduce a little bit how much red meat we eat and shifting it to more chicken and pork, for example, that's a big help right now. It reduces the strain on the food system. If we did that, we can take the pressure off the world's meat production systems, allowing the good grass-fed beef to be more common and maybe less demand for the not so good climate change producing beef production systems that are dominant today. It doesn't mean everybody has to become vegan overnight, but anything we can do to reduce the amount of beef and lamb that we eat and make sure the beef and lamb we do eat is grown more sustainably, that's a good thing. It's kind of amazing that about a third of all the food grown in the world is never even eaten. Not just the United States, but the entire world. It's incredible. In rich countries, a lot of that food waste happens around us, in our refrigerators, in our cafeterias, our restaurants. So food waste turns out to be one of the biggest levers we can pull in addressing climate change, but also helps produce more food available to the world, improving food security, reducing the environmental impact of farming in every way, not just climate change. So it turns out we can all contribute to solving climate change by thinking about what we eat, how we eat it, and how it moves through the world. We looked at a hundred different solutions, 80 that are available right here, right now, that already exist, 
and about 20 more that are kind of coming down the pike. New technologies, new ways of doing things that are very promising. When we add up those 100 solutions, we find that we can more than solve global warming. Yes, we'll have to spend some money to implement these new technologies, but they save almost twice as much money for the global economy if we just implement them.